What is good, guys? Charles from Team COG. Come on, you guys, here with a tournament report. We actually had a huge box tournament, and you guys voted for what deck I would take, and I ended up taking Crusadia. I ended up going 2 3, which is not the best. However, my only loss in this was to two Zoo Eldritch, and to be completely honest with you, I lost to Zeus and Borbo. But I also take it, took an L to Drytron. Uh, Drytron was a really close friend of mine. He drove up. He kind of explained to me, like, since this Halifibrex list that I am playing has so many different vers versatile routes it can go, he explained to me that where I should have pivoted into this ending board instead of this one would have gotten me the game. So it was a big learning experience. It was 26 players. It was, you know, top eight. I think there was, oh my goodness, like four Drytron, two Drytron, a zombie player, Dino, uh, Orcus was up there, my man Jason from Duels of the Rogue. Uh, he's gone back to back winning box tournaments like the past month, so he's done great. Uh, but for the most part, I hope you guys enjoy this. I am actually getting ready to make a migration to another, another like room in our house where I'll have better sound because currently where I am up here in my roost, there's not a lot of good light. There's a lot of open area that allows echo, so I'll be moving downstairs into the dungeon to where I can have a better sound and just a closed off room to stop background noise, to stop all that type of stuff. But uh, remember guys, if you guys want to help support the channel, and I always have to do this every video because it's what allows us to keep going in a sense, hit that join button down below and become a member. It helps out, become part of a great community. All my members can vouch for me. Uh, also, if you guys want to help support the channel but you don't want to do that, go check out teamcogcompany.site. We sell playmats and stickers. Uh, I have a field center that's supposed to be brought out, but my distributor kind of went MIA on me, so I'm trying to find another one. So if you guys happen to know one that would be willing to help, let me know. Uh, other than that, guys, I'm going to showcase you guys the list, talk to you guys about my matchup as I go through these, some changes that I've made and some changes I plan to make. And yeah, so let's just go ahead and jump in that and hear the intro. All right, guys, so here we are at the uh, just deck profile, the portion. I'm just going to run through my list real fast, main, extra, and side, just kind of show you guys what happened to play it. And as I'm doing this, I'm going to try to explain to you, like, my matchups, things that I think, etc. Like, and like I said, guys, I really only lost to two Zoo Eldritch and a Drytron player. Drytron player was a personal friend of mine, and that deck is just straight fire. Like, that deck is good. Uh, as far as Zoo Eldritch goes, they opened, busted, those busted one-ofs, like, Forbidden Droplets, like, those powerful cards that like, my deck inherently can negate if set up for it but they happen to hard open them like all three all two games or all four games they all had them so i mean it is what it is but uh for the most part i think that deck is a war crime i'm gonna go talk to the geneva convention and get that deck put on a wrap so don't you guys worry about it but i will go ahead and jump into the main extra and side real fast and uh i'll try to breeze through it because most of the stuff is kind of different however i will just touch base on the things that are different so uh without further ado let's just go ahead and jump into it breeze right by it three maximus not much more can be said here. It is the level four that it's, you know, it's just, it's a really good card. My favorite card in the entire deck. Uh, three Draco. This card is such a powerful, superior extender. Uh, it's just, again, really good. Recursion for powerful pushes and allows us to play through hand traps. A uh, three Arborea. Arborea is extremely important in this strategy because we're using health. It's a searchable tuner that we allows us to make Hal of Fibrex. And Hal of Fibrex actually is what allows this deck to play without any Crusadias. Uh, they were three times yesterday. I didn't open a single Crusadia in two out of those three times just because I was able to make health because that's, you know, in inherently that's what the deck is like trying to do. I was able to make my board. So, I mean, it is good. Uh, given one of those two times I did it, I got outed by a Forbidden Droplets because I was already fighting from the <laughs> uh, fighting an uphill battle by not seeing a Crusadia. And just to have Forbidden Droplets on top of that without like having the ability to set up to negate something like that. Just, you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, but three Reclusia. Uh, Reclusia is really good. I did have an instance come up. Uh, do you remember like if you can summon like Reclusia? Reclusia can force a back row and then it is still in the same chain. Equimax can tribute the Reclusia negating the back row that you're, force that you're forcing. Uh, as long as it's not a counter trap, of course. Uh, so dude, that is a very good, that's like a next level play. Maybe some like uh, veteran Crusade players know this. So people who just picked up the deck or don't play it as... Uh, like religiously, as all of us Crusade players do, that's an interesting thing you guys can do. Uh, three Leonis. Uh, that is it for the Crusade lineup. Uh, you gotta play all the names. I cannot stress that enough. You do not play, and if you, even though I just said you can play by not seeing a Crusade, that scenario came up twice, but it's not consistent enough to be like, oh, cut down your Crusade lineup. Uh, I do not recommend playing Format Skipper. Uh, the reason we did not play Format Skipper was because Gamma and Ogre existed. However, Ogre's, Ogre's gone, and now the Herald of the Orange Light's in, and I refuse to have my normal summon Gamma to Orange Light and then just lose, so... Yeah, that's that. Uh, moving on. Uh, 
two world legacy world crown this card is actually really good against uh so all so this is something that's very interesting is out of all the three decks that were there this was a 26 man event a uh, drytron was the worst matchup not because of the drytron cards because the deck just out resources out resources this deck and because of herald of the orange light but um crusadia and and uh there's one other thing that this deck like that deck does so our hard counter to that deck is a crusadia equimax because we can use equimax to negate the ritual spell and then we just save another negate like dragster for it again but since drytrons are all level ones they're able to make relinquished anima and that forces a hard negate so in some instances you're able to like get crown out crown can just sit in the side and wait for the anima so then you can stop the anima but sometimes you don't have it but that's where crown really shined or where crown would have really shined uh, is in those scenarios and in testing that has come up before but i've never like the, when i played my dry turn player like he like his uh he went first uh he actually this is so he went first made a misplay our hands were really bad i ended up making crusadia equimax plus a crocosaur and then i had a crusadia crawler set so all i needed was crawler to resolve to give me that extra card and that would make my Echomax life and my Croc life to pop something. But the boy, this legend, the legend himself, Little Ferg, the big Ferg's brother, little brother, drew, hard drew, the one of Herald of the Purple Light and stopped my Crawler from resolving. And it was just my cholesterol rose and it was crazy. But Crown is good in that matchup. And it is also good in um, certain like zoo matchups when they give you a zone to point to, you can summon this down and, and like kind of like protect from Dryden. And again, against Apollosa, this card is just really good against Apollosa. Uh, but nothing more can be said about Crown, really. We all know what it does. It's special summon negates the extra deck monster's effect. It's really good. It's a, it's like, the, it's the Crusadia's World Legacy artifact, so. Uh, moving on, we are playing Triple Paralytic Seed. Paralytic Seed is really good. Uh, so this card is, I don't really have much more to say about it, except for we all know this card makes Reflasia, but something to note that isn't necessary, this is a superior extender because in some instances where you do not have any other gas outside of Parallax Seed, Parallax Seed will get you your full combo because of it putting the two level four bodies on the field. So moving on, uh, Terra Top and Taki Tomborg. So this is a change to the deck. Uh, I'm not playing white or black right anymore. Huge shout out to my man Just Nuts Production for advising me this. So and you compare these two, this is the black dragon, this is the white dragon. This card is greater than or equal to the power of the black dragon. This card is greater than all around the white dragon. A white dragon is just a brick in your hand. Taki Tomborg can become live as long as there's a face up wind monster on your side of the field. And that includes like Parallax Seed or the searchable Draco. Not to mention through your combo, you may start as Charge Warrior or Crystal Wing Dragon. They are both wins. So this card can touch down more frequently than the white dragon could. Uh, something that I would also like to say is that Terra Top is a phenomenal card in the sense of it will bait something, it will bait an Ash because this card is such a high impact card because if they don't stop this here you're going to get the talking tomborg and then you're going to make gossip shadow and stop them from using that ash anyway so uh, it is another again it's a special if this card ever came back to more than just one i would hands down play it because the ability to make gossip shadow the ability that you can make the totem bird uh, is very very cool but it also feeds into the level three aspect of the deck which allows us to make crocosaur in our level six synchros so yeah and the reason we do that, play guide level six synchros for those who don't know, is because we play more level threes than we do level fours. And we play the level two tuner, which is Plague Spreader, which turns our level fours into level sixes. To sync, you know, turns makes our synchro summons for level sixes easier when you don't happen to see any level threes. So I think it's just the overall better strategy with the deck. But I'm uh, moving on. Three, two Psychic Wielder. This card right here, Wielder. Uh, excuse me, I said Wielder. I think it's Wielder. I don't know how to pronounce this card. I can't read because I'm a Yu-Gi-Oh player. Uh, this card just allows you to potentially play through not seeing a Crusadia because Crusade, uh, Halifibrex just requires one tuner. And if you happen to hard open like talk and no other Crusadias, you can normal this, special this, make Halk and combo off that way, depending on the other extenders in your hand. And uh, yeah, so not much more can said about that. Uh, the, the effect to where when you synchro and pop something did come up because I made they start as Charge Warrior and then this card was able to pop at least one card on the field because it was like 1800 attack versus, you know, like Charge Warriors 2000, but... Uh, moving on, we do play. We did move away from Impermanence and played Ash because Imperm is weak this format, in my opinion. Ash is the next best thing. However, uh, at, after playing in the event, I can tell you that I might actually move. And some advice from some of my uh, really close friends and testing buddies, uh, they have told me to move to Bell. So I might move to Bell because Bell, like where this card right here, will turn a one of the, like the combo decks from going 100 miles per hour to 90 miles per hour. 
Uh, Ghost Bell just completely stops them in some instances. A well-timed Ash Blossom cannot really stop Drytron. A well-timed Ash Blossom cannot really stop Zoo Eldritch. A well-timed Ash Blossom cannot really stop the Virtual World because if their hands are mediocre to good. Uh, whereas a well-timed Bell can stop them dead in their tracks. So, and something else, this is a tuner. So if you happen to open multiples or you open no Crusades, you can normal this. Special the Wielder and then make Hell of Fire and go that way. Uh, it's, it's pretty good, I'm not going to lie. So I think I might move this to this. Uh, this is a 42 card list, so I'm kind of playing playing 45 by just playing six hand traps. I don't know yet. Uh, if you do play six hand traps or do a 45 list, that does decrease your ability to see your one of bricks, which is like Crawler, Grave Diggers, the uh, Plague Spreader. So, I mean, that is a possibility. I just don't know because I want to keep close to 40 as possible. And maybe that's just superstition or whatever it is, you know, but I don't know yet. Uh, but moving on. We are rocking the Long Plague Spreader. It's our Halk target. Not much can be said. This card is really good. It just recurs itself and it allows you to make Tzolkin, allows you to make Crystal Wing. It's just really good. It's the only target we play. Actually, it's not the only target we play. It is the ability for us to go and make our level 6 Synchros uh, because this is a tuner. Our Ash Blossom's a tuner. Wielder's a tuner. Our Boar's a tuner. So we have plenty of targets to resolve our Halk on. Uh, so moving on, we are playing Pot of Desires. One Pot of Avarice and one Upstart Goblin. So Pot of Desires is a superior extender. This card allows you to play even if you do not have a good hand, whereas Pot of Avarice, where despite popular belief, when Avarice came back, every Crusade player rushed to play three of it. That was incorrect. This card is a brick in your hand, so you make it live. Desires is live throughout your entire turn, regardless of how many cards you have in your graveyard. And especially with the ability of like DD Crow, all these type of cards existing, uh, Avarice is definitely weaker to getting stopped by those type of cards, whereas Pot of Desires doesn't care. And Upstart Goblin is in here because I didn't want to play two Avarice. I wanted to play just a card that without any setup, I could go give me a free new card. And that's where Pot of Goblin, Pot of Goblin, Upstart Goblin came in handy. However, Avarice is really good drawing off a Stardust Charge, drawing off a Desires. It is good for in that instance, but it is a not good to see in your hand, which is why we're playing one of it. One Crusadia Power and two Eagle Booster. Uh, so this right here is going to change. Eagle Booster. Uh, so if you Eagle Booster your Crusadia monster before you activate an effect, they're going to hold their interruption for the Hell of Firebrex. All day, my Magius got touched. In a, like, yeah, it was, it, was, it was bad. It was inappropriately touched by every hand trap that existed. And every time that happened, I always had the Eagle Booster. So I mistakenly never used Eagle Booster because of all my Magius. But now realizing if I did, they would just held the hand trap for the Hulk, which would have been more crucial. Whereas if I played Triple Crusadia Power and they decided to hand trap my Magus, I could respond. They've already wasted their hand trap and they have to have another one to touch Hulk. And in some cases they didn't, but it's, a, you know, it's one hand trap out the window that allows me to play the game. So I think that these two will become Crusadia Power again. And something that did come up is Forbidden Droplets, Dark Blue No More. If you have Eagle Booster in your hand, you cannot activate that in response to... Forbidden Droplets, if they don't send a spell, you know, because you have a monster in the main monster zone, so you can't even activate it. Whereas Crusadia Power, you can still at least chain to those said cards, like Dark Ruler, Forbidden Droplets, and then use Equimax to negate that. So, I do think I'm going to move right back to Crusadia Power. Uh, for the Holy Trinity of Reborn spells, Living Fossil, Succession, Reborn. These two guys right here are by far the best. It actually makes me kind of want to play one more Living Fossil on the list, uh, but like I said, I'm at 42 cards. Things are getting kind of rough, and if I'm going to put in any more cards, I need to put in, like, more types of hand traps. Or, you know, I don't know yet which direction I want to do. Do I want to put in more hand traps or do I want to put in just more straight gas? I'm, I'm not too sure yet. Uh, but one thing that this format or this tournament did reveal to me is that going second against Drytron is not even worth it. And that's uh, that's my opinion. You guys can play however you want to play. Like I said, I never say that my list is the best list. I just say this is what I prefer to play. And my experience going second against these decks always is like you have to open a conjunction of busted breakable cards. And you're never going to, like, guarantee to open that. And, like... This deck's normal summon is so fragile. When you're normal summoning into an opponent's board, and they go Bethor pop, the Word of World trap banish, they go Dryden pop, you know, or Conquista or Habanero pop pop, you know, like Punishment pop. Like there's too much going, for, like going second into that, where it, like takes away your normal summon. That is too valuable to me, and from, in my personal opinion, my experience. So that's why I want to play first. And like these cards right here, Monster Born of Living Fossil, just allow you to, if your normal summon gets touched while going first, like Ogre. Uh, what's another one? Or Ogre, Orange, like Gamma. You can still play the game by having these. That's why I almost want to bump Living Fossil up to two just to have that. Succession is really good. Still, like, I'm not dissing Succession. It's still one of my favorite Reborn cards uh, simply because it, the only reason it's worse than these guys is it requires a setup. And uh, the reason it's better than these guys is because it's actually searchable for a turn three follow up, which is really good. Reinforcements, E Telly. 
not much more to be said. This card's actually pretty good to kind of like beam out an ash, uh, beam out a debated ash because you can beam it. Uh, something I've actually even thought about playing in the hand trap form is Ghost Ogre. So then like I can fire this off, send out Ghost Ogre, and then like going second that is, then I have a Ghost Ogre that I can like, you know, manipulate the board to and like pressure my opponent. And then I guess going first, it's a card you can set chain to like those blowout cards like Dropless and Dark Ruler, get yourself out an Ogre, and then you have an additional disruption because of Ogre being on the field. Uh, but I don't know yet if I'm going to play Ogre. I'm not entirely sure. I don't think Ogre is as good this format. I think Bell is just 10 times better. But that being said, Etelli just beams out the Psychic Wilder, which is allows us to extend and allows us to make our rank sixes and or our, not our rank sixes, our synchro sixes or our synchro nine. Finally, for the trap, Grave Diggers and Crawler. Uh, Crawler will always be in your hand, so don't even worry about this card. I don't even know why we attempt to search for it. We always are going to be grabbing power off of Regulex because Crawler is going to be in our hand. Uh, but this deck actually does not suffer too bad from Crawler being in our hand. If we see Crawler in our hand, we just totally skip Regulex and just go for Halifibrax and combo that way without using up our extra deck. Grave Diggers Trap Hole. This card just answers everything that is practically meta right now. Everything activates in the hand or in the graveyard. So this card just answers that. And this card, you have access to this card via hard drawing it or by Trap Tricks for Flasia. And I always don't mind drawing this card near the end of my combo because it is a solid another form of disruption to end on. And it's just it's just really good. And it also is what allows us to play around hand traps. So that's it for the main deck, guys. Like I said, not too much has changed. And I'm all probably going to try to fit in some more hand traps. I don't know yet, but we'll have to wait and see. So we're just going to breeze through the extra. Uh, two Magius, one Regulet, one Equimax. I can never stress enough how powerful this card is. This card is straight bonkers. The amount of pressure this card does going first, the amount of pressure this card does going second is remarkable. Uh, you must play two Magius in case the first one gets inappropriately touched by a hand trap and you play Regulex to search your Crawler or your Crusaded Power. That will allow you to play around powerful cards and give you a live negation and the ability to have a follow-up on your turn three. One Hal, one Link Spider. Halk is like, so Halk is better in my opinion than LP because yes, both cards can be touched by hand traps the same way. However, if your LP is touched by Ash Blossom or anything like that, you are subjectively into awkward plays and you on a weaker board, whereas if Miss My Halk gets touched by Ash Blossom in permanence or something like that, I can just immediately make Equimax. Well, I guess in the same argument, if they perm the LP, LP and Spath, I can make Equimax. But in this case, if they happen to Ash Hell of Fibrax, Hell of Fibrax can turn into, you just special summon, make Equimax still, you know, still put up a board. Link Spider, I, this was kind of a last minute add, could, simply because of, I feared the rock, and I was all right, I was definitely in the right to fear the rock, uh, because I got rocked twice, and one time I got rocked, and because this card right here punishes players for rocking at the wrong time, and uh, rewards the good player, rewards like this deck for holding back, or holding back the resources, or playing the resources appropriately, because I got rocked, and I was like, cool, Link Spider, Arborea, Halifibrax, Special, special, Crystal Wing, Equimax, Crawler, Crown. I mean, it's, it's something that's, you know, it's, it's just crazy. It's just really good. And the Rock can totally stop her turn. It's one of those cards that's almost, it's almost, the Rock is just like a card that takes away your normal summon. So as they rock you and you don't have the ability to get a Link Arrow out there, you're, it's almost like your normal summon just got, it, practically your normal summon never happened. You know what I mean? You just practically gave your opponent all this stuff. But that's it for the Link Monsters. Uh, there was a few times I missed a Link 2, like having an additional Link 2. But I don't think there's any space to do that. The bad thing about this list is the extra deck space is super tight because of everything. But uh, moving on. Coral Dragon. Charge Warrior. Zulkin. Crystal Wing. This package right here is really good. It draws you two cards. And especially if you have a card in your hand you don't like, you can put it to the top of your deck via Plague Spreader. Use your powerful extenders like uh, Pot of Desires, Pot of Avarice. Reshuffle the deck. Draw two fresh new cards. And then draw a third card off of the Coral Dragon. This card just gives you an immediate draw. Uh, this right here is kind of how you, these two guys, Synchron into Zulkins, how you cheat out Crystal Wing because you search for the Crawler throughout your combo. So you're always going to have a card to set to, tr to signal, uh, to fire off the Zulkin. And then if you don't have the resources or the hand, or like your hand's like a mixture of threes and fours, and maybe like, you know, some other like hand traps or something like that, and you don't have the ability to make Zulkin, you can just hard make Crystal Wing using the Shardus Charge and the Plague Spitter to hard make it. And that's, that's just another way too. Uh, there's something else. This is the only card in the deck you can tag out with with Halk with. So when you tag out with Halk into this, they solve this. Because in some hands, like you maybe you'll get hand trapped or interrupted, and you don't have the extra resources to make Equimax. You can at least tag into this, and this will get you a draw. So then you're starting your turn with like three follow-ups, etc., or like three cards in hand to follow up or four cards, uh, which is not too bad. 
Uh, this card actually, like these two cards are really good in like simplified game states when you can't get to your Crusadia cards. But uh, anyway, that's it. Crystal Wing is just also my choice of card to summon because Crystal Wing doesn't care where any monster activates, it goes no. And that's what I really wanted was to stop a Drytron in hand, stop a Drytron in the grave, stop the Golden Lord in hand, stop the Golden Lord in grave, all that type of stuff. I wanted to have this. And uh, in the sense of sometimes when they rock you, you know, like, you know, the song, they will rock you, you will, uh, Crystal, not Crystal Wing, uh, but yeah, Crystal Wing has the ability just to get over cards like that. Very similar also to Facing Dragoons. Uh, if they have a Dragoon negate and you just enter battle and whack with Crystal Wing, Crystal Wing during damage will gain the attack because Dragoons is higher. They'll attempt to negate with Dragoons. You just negate with Crystal Wing and then you still beat over the Dragoons, which is really cool. Never didn't come up, thank goodness, but it is there for that possibility. One Croc, one Dragster. Dragster, self-explanatory. With the Ritual deck being prominent, you want to have a way to negate the Ritual spell cards. And since Drytron has so many good spell cards like Fafnir, Nova, and Drytron Meteoronis, you want to have the ability to negate at least two of those. And that's where Equimax and this come in. You're at least going to have the ability to negate two. I highly recommend saving this and the Equimax to negate the Ritual spell when it tries to Ritual Summon twice. Because they can still go on the extra deck, yes. But at least, at least you're stopping them from getting to the entire powerful side of the engine, which is tributing bin 10 or summoning out uh natasha i just shouldn't have said they don't tribute bin 10 they they send for they they check attack but uh, whatever you know as know what i'm saying croc is a card i really wanted to touch base on because croc is really good it draws you additional cards which allow you to draw into more powerful extenders all this type of thing but on top of that it's a walking disruption whereas we are not the only deck that will suffer from our normal summon getting touched so the fact that we have the ability to access a card that actually pops the normal summon also is really good it gives us an edge in the very rare but seldom mirror match, but it also gives us the ability to have hard interactions with our opponent, which is really good. And again, again, it draws you cards. Not much more can be said because sometimes you're not going to be able to get to like, you're not going to have the fours in your hand, right? To get to fours with level two to get to crystal wing, but you're going to have like a handful of level threes. So that's where like you go into either this and then synchro here, get two cards, or you do like start as charge warrior plus a level three tuner get two cards you draw two cards off of this type of combo while still like you're drawing two cards which fuels this and you're still going to be able to get to your echo max plus your either your reflage your dweller crown whatever you name it moving on reflasia to stop hand traps dweller because dweller is the goat of the format dweller is good against every deck currently bamboozling because terra top equals this and some other hands where you don't see terra top and you open a hand of full of just monster mash and level threes you can make this and protect from hand traps but that's mostly what I kept discovering was that Reflage and Dweller. Reflage is only good when you open, like you want to end on the Dweller, enter combo, or you want to start your combo with Reflage. So that's something you never want to, it's like never vice versa. You don't, if you open Paralytic Seed, you're not going to make Dweller first thing because then you're subjected to hand traps. You're always going to make Reflage. At the end of your combo, you're not going to make Reflage. You're going to make Dweller because Dweller ends up touching everything in the graveyard saying you are not going to get anything in your graveyard, which Drytrons can't get Benton, Drytrons can't get Ava, Drytrons can't activate from the graveyard when they trigger themselves off in there, Natasha can't come out, Dinosaurs, Eldritch cards, Dweller is just the goat in the format currently if you ask me. And that was my problem was I never tried to end on him, I either used Reflasia or my hands were so subpar that I had to use the Exceed or like the level 4, like the material I had to um, just finish off my overall board. But you know, that, that's the game, you know. That's it. Sometimes you're not going to open best, like the best hands, you know? If you did, it wouldn't be fun, you know what I mean? Uh, moving on to the side deck, I'll breeze through this. So I am playing Triple Turtle. Gamasil never, might not be in the main deck, but he's ne she's never left my heart. Uh, this is in here for the rock because I got tired of drawing the rock as my sixth card. I wanted a really proactive card that as soon as I drew, I could be like, bam, and give. And that's something that Gamasil really is. Uh, triple Impermanence because Impermanence is in here because you need to have a way to out the Vanity Ruler because sometimes they will end on just a Vanity Ruler in there, but their Vanity Ruler will be backed up by Herald of the Orange Light. So you need to fire this off and just hope that they didn't draw the one of, but if they do, it is what it is. Uh, but you fire this off and then you do your combo because they can add the pur uh, purple light after, but it doesn't matter because you already resolve Impermanence. Uh, this is just to shut off the Vanity's Ruler. Triple Droll. Drolls in here also for Drytron because you just need to have something to stop that deck. That deck is so powerful and so consistent and so resource. Like it just little to nothing gets you so much. So you Droll and Lockbro just kill that deck. And this also also hurts uh, like Invoke Dogmatica. I'm trying to think of what else it could hurt. Uh, that, that's about it. That's all I can really think of. Invoke Dogmatica. Maybe, maybe it can kind of slow Dinos down a little bit, but not too much. Uh, three Cosmic Cyclones. 
you like you had to, I had to have back row removal and I don't think this was enough. I think I should have in full full disclosure. I am a budget player by choice. I do not like if I wanted lightning storms, I would get lightning storms, but I am not going to spend that much money on lightning storms. However, if you are on a budget and you are not on a budget by choice and you have to be on a budget, Hatred Nade is a phenomenal card that allows you to play around Eldritch, play around these things. Not too good against Virtual World because they just flip over the trap, but at the most part, it does a well enough job, especially by activating the Hatred Nade. You either give your opponent, your Eldritch player the choice to either activate all these cards and not even like Habanero and Conquistador will not resolve anything and they'll just be face up on the field for free or they just go back to the hand. And it also like Hatred Nade solves like Strike, all those other type of bat like Impermanence, all this stuff. They, they solve all those, it solves all those cards that are set. Whereas Cosmic, I don't feel like did enough and Twin Twisters, we don't like discarding the deck so we didn't want, I did not want to discard. Dark Ruler No More, we're playing this over Droplets because like I said, we don't like to discard. And the, the best thing I like to do is we put up, we really do, we put on big monsters. We, we honestly do. We put up enough big monsters that we really don't have any fear of not being able to run over everything. But a good old Dark Ruler No More, and then you just like run over like three or four of their monsters, and then they're, now they have to rebuild their board with you with staring down like two to three to four disruptions. is pretty good, you know what I mean? So that, that's why I like Dark Ruler over Fin Droplets. But uh, some things I would possibly change is I really, mm, changing this for if I can get all the Lightning Storms, Lightning Storm. Uh, maybe possibly trading this out for a different type of hand trap because in perm I think is weaker this format I do don't do not miss the rock like the rock has not I did not miss the rock at all Because I saw it the kaijus and the kaijus came in really clutch because you know it doesn't matter what summon you're on I saw your one monster I can still push and try to win sort of thing and it just kind of like relives like the old OTK I do miss playing crusader revival, but we just had to make room in the list for like more powerful cards like as good as revival is in conjunction with like dark ruler and kaijus I uh, it was still like it's it's only good if you can search and you can get that off whereas like you know if you see like one of your side deck you're still pretty good but anyway guys that is it for the list i hopefully plan to change to make a few minor changes enter like one or two more remote duels which of course will be part of this ccs series the road to the ccs and then i hopefully will vlog the entire ccs coming up but if you guys enjoy this comment down below and let me know but for the most part y'all stay safe out there this is charles from team cog signing out